What's the best or some of the best supplements to take to heal a leaky gut? Well, uh, yeah, we've learned a lot about leaky gut o- over the years. And um, there are a few things that I think there are important. One is uh, uh, leaky gut is often caused by an overgrowth of uh, bacteria in our small intestine. And this creates an environment of inflammation, and that leads to, to the damage to the intestinal lining. So often it's not so much the foods that we're eating, it's our inability to break down those foods. So uh, one thing that I found to be quite helpful is uh, eliminating any digestive secretion deficiency. And it can either be lack of hydrochloric acid or lack of digestive enzymes. Uh, With lack of uh, hydrochloric acid, generally, as soon as people start eating food, they'll they'll feel uh, bloated, they'll feel uncomfortable, they may have belching and just, uh, you know, other GI symptoms, maybe even pain. Uh, If that happens within the first half hour of eating, uh, that's a good sign that they can benefit from hydrochloric acid supplementation. And on my website, uh, I, I have a, a protocol that, that I've used. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a titrated dosage where we're trying to determine how much uh, hydrochloric acid a person needs. They start out by just taking one capsule uh, uh, with their meal. And then at each meal at that same size, they keep increasing the dose uh, until they feel a warmth in the stomach. If they take one pill and it causes pain or it causes this warmth feeling, then we know hydrochloric acid is not for them. Uh, but uh, my, in my experience, uh, it's a it's, uh, lack of hydrochloric acid is one of the easiest things to, to remedy. There are a long list of health conditions that are associated with low gastric acidity. Virtually all the autoimmune diseases, uh, leaky gut is another thing that we often see lack of hydrochloric acid. And and if you fail to correct this fundamental insufficiency, it's really hard to make an impact. If if you have low hydrochloric acid uh, secretion, uh, you really need to... to, uh, top that off by supplementating what your body needs. The other thing that I uh, found quite useful are uh, digestive enzymes. And usually when people are lacking digestive enzymes, there are feelings of gas, bloating, indigestion. Uh, Those will appear usually after 45 minutes uh, from eating. So uh, they're a little uh, more delayed. And uh, I know a lot of people are uh, caught up in the, the craze with probiotics and probiotics have their place, but probiotics don't digest food. And we know that, that many of these issues, uh, leaky gut, irritable bowel syndrome, et cetera, they, they are related more to the inability to break down food properly. Uh, and so taking digestive enzymes can help break down food properly. And it, it also affects the, the microbiome. Uh, We now know that a lot of these uh, digestive complaints uh, associated with irritable bowel syndrome, gas bloating, indigestion, uh, constipation or diarrhea or alternating of those two are related to bacteria and yeast uh, migrating from the colon into uh, the small intestine. And one of the first consequences of lack of, of either hydrochloric acid or digestive enzymes secreted by our pancreas and intestinal lining is a disruption in that protection against that from happening. So um, we've got to address the underlying cause. And for a lot of people's indigestion, it's because they're not digesting food. And, 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 and honestly, uh, you know, a lot of people think for any digestive complaint, you need to take probiotics, but the uh, irritable bowel syndrome, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, even leaky gut, uh, sometimes probiotics can make it worse because uh, you've got a situation where uh, the probiotics are not going where they're needed or should be, which is in the very end of the small intestine and into the colon, they're starting to, to populate the upper small intestine. And that's where you get a lot of the digestive complaints because the bacteria start getting to the food before we've had a chance to digest and absorb it. So 
Uh, I like to uh, approach any digestive issue by trying to find the underlying cause and two underlying causes of leaky gut uh, are lack of hydrochloric acid and lack of digestive enzymes. Usually it's one or the other, but sometimes it's both. And then as far as what we can take to uh, even you know, uh, supplement the health of that tissue even more, I like N-acetylcysteine. And uh, N-acetylcysteine is, is a, a natural compound. It's an amino acid that can enhance the the production of glutathione. And glutathione is a, a cellular compound that is the most important antioxidant within our cells. And uh, it's been shown to be very helpful in preventing excessive permeability of the respiratory tract lining, as well as the gastrointestinal tract lining. So it's just a real simple uh, remedy for uh, for the for the leaky gut and given its other roles in, in terms of its ability to improve the mucus secretions and help fight viral infections and exert some anti-aging effects I, I think it, it really is a fundamental uh, uh, additional supplement for the leaky gut obviously uh, the gut lining, it's turning over every four days. So we have to have all the basic uh, building blocks of nutrition there, uh, which include vitamins, uh, minerals, uh, uh, sufficient amounts of protein, the right types of fat, enough water, uh, and, and electrolytes. Those, those are some of the things that, uh, that, that I focus on with, with the, with the, uh, kind of supporting that. And then you want to eliminate any obstacles to a, to a cure. And sometimes people do have food allergies and food allergies, uh, they create a, a lot of inflammation and that can lead to, to damaging that intestinal lining and lead to a leaky gut. So uh, sometimes a, a, an allergy elimination diet is a great way to identify food allergens. The most common allergens are wheat, corn, milk, citrus, eggs, peanuts. Uh, so just start maybe by eliminating those common allergens and seeing how your body does. And if, you, if there's a, a big difference noted, then you can, if you, if you particularly like those foods, uh, you can try adding them back in one at a time and, and not introduce another food for the, that's on that uh, avoidant list for at least three days and, and let's see if your, your body uh, uh, is okay with that food that you just added. If it is, then you can try something uh, additional to that. But just, these are real simple things that can have really profound benefits. And, you know, th this condition, uh, it, it's real. And many of these people, they've been battling it for decades and have, haven't got the right answers because they're in my opinion, they're not looking at it from uh, a physiological view. And, and that is, you know, what does that tissue need to be healthy? And why is it uh, so irritated? And, and why is it so hyper permeable? And uh, I think the things that, I, that I've shared can, can help uh, a lot. And if more is needed, there's also uh, additional steps that we can take.